Okay, great. Okay, so I am Juliet from Plugin Media, and I am going to talk about how we, um, the strategies and the techniques that we use to upskill and train our staff at Plugin Media. So this is us, and oh, I forgot there's lots of clicking in this one. So this is us. Um, we were founded in 2003, and we're based just around the corner in North Lane. Um, we are a superfused business um, of 16 staff. We're pretty much split a third, a third, a third across um, technical development, uh, creative design, and production. And we make digital entertainment for kids. We make apps and games and animation, and we do that for online, mobile, and broadcast. Um, this is an overview of the kind of skills that we've got within the business. Um, really, what I need to say here is that the types of skills that we need within our business is continually evolving. And we're not um, particularly a product-focused company, so every project we do is completely different from the last. So it does result in an enormous need to, uh, to upskill staff and, and bring new skills into the business. The context in which we're doing this, um, our company is kind of founded on the, the premise, which is that children expect their favorite entertainment brands on every device that they have access to. And, um, and also the fact that, and as, uh, partly as a result of that, that the sector that we work in has seen huge technological change um, across the devices, platforms, and it just makes the whole um, context of the, the, the product that we deliver and the context that we deliver it, a very kind of fragile and ever-changing thing. Um, and as a consequence, what we've done with the business is kind of effectively um, given it two functions. Firstly, we're a busy work-for-hire studio, so we make apps and games and, and content that's basically taking other people's brands and translating them into interactive experiences. And then the other side of the business works more as a production company, where we're actually creating our own IPs and new, new brands for kids um, and, and starting them from scratch and then delivering them out to the audience directly. And that has ended up with quite a shift in our business model. And so we've ended up um, in a situation where we've got a mix of different output, a mix of different business models, and of course that's demanding a mix of different skills. So order, in order to explain it a bit more, I've got a couple of projects which kind of, a couple of videos which show. Talk over the top of this. Okay, so this is a game we made at the beginning of last year. Uh, for CBBC, and this was an HTML5 game, so it was, it was embracing quite a new tech for us at the time. Um, it's typical for the kind of agency work we, that we do in that it's owned by someone else and we deliver it as work for hire for the BBC. Um, and it's interactive. And then the next thing I'm going to show you is this one. Oh, sorry, it's done the same one again. Okay, this one. So this is our own brand. This is called TMO. And this is something that we developed in-house, took two years to develop, and it's a truly kind of multi-platform property in that we, we started it as a suite of games on CBBC, uh, sorry, CBBS. We've then taken that into short form, so we've done animated shorts, we've done some songs, um, and we'll be taking this out as a TV, we'll be starting production on television series at the beginning of next year. And so in terms of the skills that the, co the company has needed to bring to this project, it's a huge range of different technical skills because not only have we done flash games HTML games we're also publishing our own apps using unity we've had to do all the character design ourselves and I suppose on the production side what is demanded is much more entrepreneurial skills from our producers so we start to look at exploiting our own content and raising finance for our own animated TV series so um, how have we brought, how have we kind of shifted the business between these two? I mean, we've got both models sim um, working simultaneously at the moment, but how do we really embed this shift within the company? Um, this was a quote that I found. I'm not a huge believer, or, or I don't read a lot of management manuals, but I do really like this book. It's called Creativity Inc., and it's by Ed Catmull, uh, who was one of the founders at Pixar. And um, I think what's really great about this quote is that it really kind of talks about how you can 
embed learning as a kind of modus operandi, I suppose, within your business. And that's kind of what we've ended up doing. I kind of went to my um, heads of department and said, well, you know, how are we going to make this shift within the business? Have we got the skills? Can we do it? And, um, and I gave them, I said, told them to browse all the different courses on the skill set website and all the rest of it. And they said, actually, we'd rather teach it ourselves and, and, and do it all in-house. So the next few slides are just going to demonstrate really how we've embedded that within the business. Um, and because I can, I thought I'd start off with a picture of a naked man. Um, so our creative director has a mass... He, his kind of view is that anyone can learn new software, but um, actually learning drawing skills takes a really, really long time. So one of the things that the art department asked for was that we should do regular life drawing, and I think there's a class at New England House. And it's not just for the art department, although it's mainly them who go along, but they go off and, and draw every lunchtime, every lunch like one lunchtime a month or something. So that's worked really well. Also in the art department, we gave them a day to work on character design. Um, we had one of our members of staff leave, and he was a really great character designer. So we kind of thought, well, well, let's get everyone in the room and really share what he knows. Um, so this was a brief around a gay gazelle. And um, it started out by everyone researching what gazelles actually looked like. And then they started to work on character. Um, and then they did lots of sketches. And we ended up with a character at the end of the day. Um, then the next thing, we'd been trying out, as we moved into doing more app production, we were having to use Unity as a piece of software. Uh, and we were actually trying to make Unity do a lot of 2D stuff, which it didn't at the time very naturally do. Um, so we were kind of making all these different pipelines th within the business to make software do what we wanted it to do. And so that, this kind of day was a day for the art team really to kind of explore how they animated directly within Unity. And actually this day was run by our, um, our technical animator. And so he's, he, within the business he works as a brilliant bridge between technical and creative. And so he was there teaching everyone within the art team how to animate with Unity. And it's resulted in a massive saving in our pipeline um, and really given us much, many more efficiencies on how we do things. Um, so this is on the technical side, um, kind of around four years ago in 2011 we noticed that the industry was starting to shift away from Flash and towards HTML5 and so what we did with this one was we got, it was actually our ex-technical director who'd been experimenting quite a lot with this tech and we got him to come in and work with the tech team to build a game in a day um, and they built this little um, platform game. Um, and again, that, that was great. It, was, you know, it wasn't particularly polished at the end of the day, but it gave us a portfolio piece and really enabled us to have a bit of a creative edge, a sort of competitive edge, when people were demanding those skills. We had something that in our portfolio that demonstrated them. Um, and then as a couple, I think it was a couple of years later, we took the same tech and ran another day, but in, enhanced it and, and created a sort of extension task, which was around uh, looking at multiplayer and, and socket servers. And so I think the team here were all using um, different uh, mobile devices to control the game on the television. Um, so that, again, was, gave us another um, piece of work for the portfolio, but also it kind of gave us a new idea of where to take things, which has become a kind of idea that we can now come back to when we're doing creative development on new ideas. Um, so this one was done at the beginning of the year. This We'd just done a massive Unity project for um, Nickelodeon, and we thought it was a really good opportunity for us to kind of do a post-project review and really streamline what we'd been doing and, and for everyone in the team or even the people who hadn't worked on that team to share all the working practice that had happened during that project. And it also coincided with a new starter. So in itself, it became a really good training opportunity for, for our new team member. Um, so that was good. This is another way in which we kind of embed sort of learning within the business. Quite often, even on client projects, we'll begin each one with a bit of really focused R&D. So we'll, we'll start the project saying, what are the unknowns? How can we tackle them? And we'll dedicate maybe two to three days at the beginning of the project at just trialing little elements. And this, um, our technical director, um, you, uh, built this game in about three days um, using a new technology that we needed to try out called Hacks. And again, that gave us a great portfolio piece. Um, it enabled us to kind of really um, address all the, all the challenges of the new tech and see um, what we could do with them. So that was great. 
And then on the production side, I think we place quite a lot of emphasis on conferences. This is a picture from the Children's Media Conference, and that's Dom there, um, who is who's our creative director. And he quite often talks at this conference. I'm on the committee for the conference, but actually what we try and do is get our producers going along to the conference, and they actually produce sessions for the conference, which is really great for them because it connects them into the industry at large, which can be difficult when you're working on very specific projects. So they're kind of doing a business development function for me, which is fab. Um, it means that they kind of get to understand the bigger context of their work and, um, and, it, and it gets them a couple of days out of the office, which I think is a really good kind of refresher, really. Um, and then there's a couple more things which I was going to show you, which are things we've done right across the company. So these are days where we've all got together um, and everyone's working together on, on the same thing. So this was something we started about three or four years ago, was show and tell breakfasts. And the idea here was that people would share different things that they'd learned um, or knew about or that were relevant to their work um, and, and talk for about, well, we, they were kind of workshops and kind of talks, so we allowed kind of between 45, and an hour, 45 minutes and an hour and a bacon sandwich for everyone to, um, to engage in these sessions, and we do them on a Friday morning. And we did such a huge range of different stuff. This was a, um, a watercolour um, painting session we did. We also did karate. Um, we did... Um, I brought my kids in and got um, the team working with them and getting, them understand, getting the team understanding what digital products really kids enjoy um, using. Um, we also did script writing, uh, improvisation, loads of different stuff, and it was really great for pulling the team together, but also gave people a kind of context of, of stuff that was also more directly relevant to, to, to um, their day jobs. I think there was a big talk about mobile and stuff, so it was a real mix of sort of hobbies and, and work stuff. And then this was something we did at the beginning of the day, and this is a, sorry, beginning of the year, and this is a video as well. Um, and this was a whole company-wide hack day, so it wasn't just the tech team and it wasn't just the art department. Um, it was the entire company working together to produce um, a number of games in one day. We'll let Alan talk through this. Uh, we're building a robot um, that moves in time to the music. We're making a small game about a god that causes earthquakes with his steps. It's a uh, shooting gallery game which responds to the music which uh, is broadcast into his machine. We're doing a game with a sinky boat. Yeah. We are making a augmented reality racing game which responds to the music that Al has programmed into the server. Um, so there's these three bits of data about the audio and um, that's being streamed to a server and that is being multicast to everybody else's apps around the room. It sort of sinks more on the beat, the louder it is, the faster it sinks. And the, uh, the trees and the bushes will be dancing to the music. Uh, inspired by 20s gangsters. All the objects around as well, they're kind of based on like various frequencies that we get from the um, music. JavaScript is one of the languages that we're using a lot now. And JavaScript as a language is not only very easy to use, but it's also pushing into the real world. But the new buzzword at the moment is the Internet of Things, and Node.js is what we can do with that. So we take our skills as um, interactive developers and we can do things physically in the real world now. So that was um, Alan, our technical director, and hopefully it was clear from the video, but basically he set a brief for the entire company, which was around that piece of music um, by uh, Benny Goodman, I think, and everyone had to create something that responded to that music. So we ended up with um, teams of a producer, an artist, and a tech person. And um, so it must have been six teams in the end, six projects and six quite fun different outcomes. Um, and then just to conclude, um, in terms of what, oh, yeah, so what I think the benefits of these different strategies have been. Um, first of all, it's, you know, is that factor that everyone's so busy and heads down on projects day to day that sometimes they don't really notice what else is going on in the business. Um, and so these kind of strategies are really great opportunities to step back from client work and have, have a play. 
Um, I think what's worked really well about the sort of peer tutoring that's happened when we've got uh, people within the company teaching, teaching the, um, the teams is that it makes people feel a, le a lot less kind of um, frightened to ask questions and much more engaged with the person who's doing the teaching. Um, so that's been really fun and good for the, for the company, I think. Um, also, obviously, it means that everything that we're doing is completely directly aligned to where we want to go as a company, which is a huge strength for me. I think, you know, sending people on courses um, might not have the same um, impact because it just wouldn't be so directly relevant to where we want to go as a business. Um, Obviously, it results in quite a lot of team bonding, um, and it, it enables you to mix up the teams as well. I think different people work with, um, with, with people that they wouldn't necessarily work with on a project. Um, it's definitely had impacts on our imp um, efficiency and our profitability. We've been kind of really engaging with new um, processes through this, and I think that's been great and had measurable results, really. Cost less than sending people on courses, that's an obvious one. Um, obviously, you need, do need to think about the amount of time people take out of work from it, but I, th I think it pays off. Um, it enables us to really prioritize innovation, which is so essential for a business like ours, which is, is very much driven by every the next idea that we come up with. Um, the team becomes up upskilled, and, and within the business, we place so much, because we have this mix of different products, we place so much emphasis on the agility of the team and the fact that the staff do jump around between um, all these different disciplines. They, you know, we look for kind of generalists, and then we expect them to do lots of different things. And finally, because it's bright, and I, th I thought I'd say that it lets us superfuse, which I think it really gets the, the technical side. Those, those whole team days really gets the technical side and the design side of the business really working together, which is a brilliant result. That's it. <laughs>